Hello again and welcome to another presentation, a really short one actually this. This one's about transporting materials in plants. It's kind of a follow-on to transporting materials in animals which covered the heart and blood and so on and so forth. But it's also a follow-up to the transpiration, the very short transpiration presentation that I did some time ago. So you can watch it in conjunction with those. Now I'll be mentioning transpiration a little bit, uh, just in case you can't remember. Transpiration is just the way that water evaporates from leaves on a plant, that's it really. And this presentation really, because it's looking at the idea of transport, is going to major on the idea of the two key transport tissues in a plant. Uh, they are xylem and phloem. I'm just going to talk you through what they do and their role. Um, xylem we've mentioned quite a lot already in transpiration, so you can expect to hear a little bit of repetition. But phloem we haven't really mentioned, and that's really what I'm going to major on in this short presentation. So uh, here we've got a picture of a plant, and if I was to cut through one of the roots here and look at the end view of that to see what the root looks like, it would be something like this. So there's the expanded, in fact let me shrink this down here and bring this up again for you. Now you don't need to know all of these labels here, all I want you to be aware of really is that you've got the xylem in the middle there and these little bundles, which are the phloem. Now we're going to come back to the phloem story a little bit later on in the presentation, but just remember that the phloem is there for now, we'll return to that later. We've got our trusty root hair cells here, increasing the surface area, of course, for diffusion. We know all about that, and active uptake as well, they're involved in that. And, and that's kind of, kind of it, really. So water moves in through the root hairs into the xylem, and it's going to go off up the stem in the transpiration stream. So water comes in through the root hairs into the xylem, and it's going to go up to the transpiration stream. Now the phloem is concerned with bringing glucose down from the top part of the plant. Glucose can travel in the phloem, and it's sent down in the phloem. It's a tiny molecule glucose, a really, really, really small molecule. This, if this, this could be glucose here, look. And, but it's soluble. And if you have too much glucose in any cells, as we've spoken about before, it draws water in by osmosis. And so you don't want to have glucose building up in any part of the plant. So if during the day when the plant's photosynthesizing, it makes too much glucose, there's excess glucose. It sends it down to the root in the phloem, and then it's stored as starch, and that's important, in the root, in the blue area of the root there. Now, um, starch is a much bigger molecule. It's made of tens of thousands of glucose molecules, all bound together. So it's insoluble and it doesn't affect the osmosis of the cells. So you can store starch very, very safely. So glucose is great for transporting. That can go through the phloem. Starch couldn't because it's insoluble. So starch is used to store. Think of S for starch, S for store. And the glucose is used for transportation. So just to summarise what we're saying about the root, two things. Firstly, water comes into the root, like this, into the xylem. That's going to head off up to the top parts of the plant in what we call the transpiration stream, which we mentioned in our last presentation. And secondly, you've got glucose. If there's excess glucose being made, you've got it coming down here in the phloem, which you'll notice is spelled P-H-L-O-E-M. And the glucose comes down there, it passes out of the phloem, and is built up into starch and stored in here. Now it's worth mentioning that transpiration just happens, it's a passive process, it's all done by evaporation from the top part of the plant, but the movement of sugars around the plant is, is more active, it's done by pumping systems, which is why the phloem tends to have lots of mitochondria in it. They are pumping the sugars to different parts of the plants, so that's a very active process, whereas um, the um, transpiration is passive. Now it's also worth mentioning that at night time, when the photosynthesis has stopped at the top of the plant, then the starch that was built up in the root can be converted back into glucose and sent back up 
through the phloem to the top parts of the plant where it will be needed. And if you remember that the glucose is needed in every living cell, animal or plant, for respiration. So at night time, when photosynthesis stops up the top end of the plant, then the starch from the root is converted back into glucose and it's pumped back up to the top parts of the plant. So whereas xylem is a one-way street, you've only got water moving up the plant, phloem is a two-way street. At night time, it sends the glucose up to the top part of the plant. In the daytime, we've got the glucose moving down to be stored as starch. Let's move on from the root then and look at the stem. We, do you know what? I think we've kind of covered nearly everything already. It's a really mega short presentation, but let's just have a look how this all pans out. And we've got the xylem as an X there. So I'll try and turn it sideways to make it more, look more like an X. There you go. So the xylem is an X shape. That remi will remind you constantly that it's xylem in the middle. And the phloem is in the bundles around there. So back to our plant again. And now let's cut through it. This time not in the root, but let's cut through the stem and have a look at, um, at what that looks like when we slice through that. So if I take um, a knife and cut through it here or even here, or even here, you would see this, this shape here. Now it's slightly different to the root look. You've still got the same sort of tissues there. You've got the xylem in the middle and the phloem on the outside, but no more X shape now. The xylem is now opened out into these bundles, these little Easter egg shapes. You've got your xylem in the middle there. You've got your phloem around the outside. Remember the xylem will be carrying water upwards, only upwards, only ever upwards. In fact, the water will be being dragged up the xylem in what we call the transpiration stream, moving up there. Meanwhile, the phloem on the outside could be carrying glucose in either direction. During the day, it's moving down to be stored as starch, and at night time, it's moving up to the top of the plant to provide the glucose for respiration until photosynthesis can restart the next day. Very often, you get a little green fly um, I won't do it green, I'll do it orange. You get a little green fly living on stems and they live, they sort of go on the outside of the stem like this. It's not going to look very green fly-esque. And they use their proboscis or sharp nose-like mouth part bit to tap into, oh, that's not going to get anything. Oh, it will, there we go. It's tapped into the phloem. And what green flies do is they tap into the phloem and it means that they can drink the glucose solution saves them having to feed anywhere else. So they tap into the phloem in there and during the day they'll catch the glucose solution as it moves down and at night time they'll catch the glucose solution as it moves up as it's being moved around the plant in the phloem. And finally, um, well, this, this is a diagram that you're very, very, very familiar with. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is just to slice through a leaf like this. If I slice through here and we take the end away and look down the end of the leaf. This is now an incredibly familiar uh, picture for you. You've seen it so many times. Um, slightly different one here for you, but there it is. That's what we get when we cut through the leaf. And I'm not even going to bore you with all of the details of the, of the areas. You, you, you know you've got your waxy cuticle on the top, your epidermis, the palisade cells where photosynthesis takes place. You've got your spongy cells where the air circulates around here your lower epidermis, and you've got your stomata. But the reason I wanted to show you this was that you can see in the vein here that you have got xylem and phloem. You've got the xylem in the top half of the vein, just here. There you go, that's the xylem. I'll put an X there so you can see it. And what happens there, of course, is that the water has come up from the roots and from the stem, and as the water, this is red water, but never mind, as the water evaporates from the stomata here, uh, well, you know what happens. It draws more in behind it in the xylem, the transpirational stream. We spoke in a separate presentation about how if you blow air currents across the leaf, or if you make the air drier or warmer, or you shine a light on the leaf, all of those things that cause um, evaporation to speed up, then transpiration will speed up as well. So we know about that. That's where the water arrives, and as it evaporates, it pulls more through cohesion behind it through the xylem vessels. But also, underneath it here, you've got phloem vessels as well, and these are the ones that are going to collect the sugar from the palisade cells, 
Um, and when the leaf can't store any more starch, because the f first of all, uh, as glucose is building up, the leaf will try and store the starch, but once the leaf is full of starch, then the glucose starts to get exported down to the stem, uh, um, to the roots from here, from this phloem. I'll put a letter P there. Now people often forget which way round they go, so I always say you have a kiss at the top and a P from the bottom. So that helps you to remember which way round it is. The top is the xylem, the bottom is the phloem. So you've got two processes taking place. You've got um, the water arriving here in the xylem to be used for, for photosynthesis to go to the palisade cells, but some of it evaporates out of the stomata. And then you've got uh, the phloem, which is bringing the sugars either back to the leaf or taking during the day taking them down through the phloem in the stem down to the roots. Finally then, let's just take a look at what the xylem and phloem vessels look like. So if I enlarge this, this is what they would look like in the stem. And you can see on the left here, we've got the xylem. And you've just simply got water moving up through the xylem. It's like one continuously big tube. And the water is just being dragged up. As it evaporates from here, it drags more water up. It's just like a siphon dragging the water up. You will have some things dissolved in it. These are um, mineral ions from the soil, things like nitrates that the plant needs to grow. So uh, they are just carried up in the transpiration stream. They're not pumped actively up there. They just get carried up in the water in the transpiration stream, but they'll go up there. Phloem, on the other hand, as you can see, is made of separate cells. It needs to be because it has lots of mitochondria in them. It's very much an alive tissue. Xylem is pretty dead, but phloem is very alive. It's got lots of mitochondria in here to fuel the pumping. And during the day, it will be pumping the, the um, glucose down to be stored in the roots of starch. And then at night, the starch is converted back into glucose and it's pumped back up again. So again, you can see that phloem is very much a two-way street. Um, daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime. Whereas xylem is just a one-way street with water constantly moving up for transpiration. And believe it or not, that is it. The shortest presentation of them all, really. As I say, try and watch it in conjunction with either the um, transporting animals one with the heart um, in, or with the transpiration one. And just to summarise what we've been through in this presentation, then, we've looked at how xylem and phloem is located in the roots, with the xylem being in the X shape and the phloem in the bundles around it. We've seen in the stem that you've got those little Easter egg shaped things with xylem and phloem in. We've seen how xylem and phloem behave in the leaves as well, how the water is delivered to the leaves, to the palisade cells, and leaks out of the stomata, and how the sugars from the leaf, when the leaves are full of starch, are transported down in the phloem to the roots where they're stored as starch before being sent back up at night, at night time. And then we look briefly at the structure of xylem and phloem. Xylem consists of dead single tubes. Phloem is very much alive with mitochondria in to fuel the two-way transport system. And that's the lot. Thank you very much indeed. Nice surprise for you that it's finished already. I'll see you next time when I think we're going to start looking at how the kidney works. Bye for now.